Hi everybody, it's time for another video of comic book unboxings. Um, and this time I thought I would do something a little bit different. Instead of just going through all the different comics that I got, I picked out the five that I'm most excited about reading, uh, and then two of the new ones. So, <laughs> let's see if this works. Um, the first one I wanted to show you is this comic book, Medicine. Um, I don't know if anybody's reading this or not, but it's actually quite good. Um, this is issue number two, and the basic promise is that there's a group of doctors without borders who um, basically go around and save villains. So while there's always all this collateral damage going on when superheroes fight and you know people get hurt, um, this kind of tells the story of what happens to villains uh, afterwards. Like, do they have their own healthcare system set up? Uh, and in this book, they do. Um, it's run by another villain who basically saw the need uh, for there to be such a thing, and he gathers this group of doctors to work for him. And some of them work for him because, you know, they really believe in the creed of do no harm, and that this should help anyone who's in, in any sort of, you know, injury or... Um, but then some of them, he has, like, dirt on them. So, um, it's actually a pretty good read uh, of the different villains, how they became villains, how they get hurt, how uh, sometimes the injuries... I have nothing to do with, you know, having superpowers, you know. Um, they've got some great different uh, abilities, and yet they still can get mortally wounded, you know. Um, so that's been interesting and fun. And then all the doctors are really interesting, you know. It's almost like watching, like, Grey's Anatomy. Because <laughs> there's just, a, you know, a different cast of people, and their motivations for being there are really interesting, and they go back into their, their history as well. Um, so this is one I definitely think if you're not reading, you should pick up Medicine by the Action Lab, Danger Zone People. Um, it's a really good read. Uh, that one's really good. The next one I wanted to show you that I'm reading and excited about is... Bloop, 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 the Defenders. This is issue number two, and it's basically the characters from the Marvel TV shows on Netflix. Uh, but so far, their writing's been uh, very good. Um, they're fighting Diamondback, uh, but a different kind of version of Diamondback, not necessarily the one from Luke Cage. Um, and it's still kind of coming together because obviously this storyline is written for like five to six issues, right? And this is only number two. But what's been interesting so far is that I think he's really gotten the voices of everybody. And uh, he's put in some really cute comic book moments. Like whenever one of the characters shows up, you know, you get their own title in the panel. And uh, also in the background, they'll show you like iconic scenes from that hero. Like they're jumping into the scene and... You get a very uh, fast, you know, history of who they are and, and things that they've been through. Um, so that's been fun. And I really, he's done a good job as well uh, of, of making them all seem like they actually are friends and, and relatable. And, and like they actually might, you know, be co-workers and all that kind of stuff like that. So kudos to that. I'm, I'm interested to see how this ends. However, uh, I don't really feel like this Diamondback character in this is much of a challenge for them. Um... But I applaud the idea that they are trying to keep it street level, you know. Um, so, this one's been good. The Descenders, that's number two. Number three to read is uh, Victor Lavelle's Destroyer from Boom Studios. I think we talked about this one last time. Uh, I finally read uh, the first issue, and it's basically a, a Frankenstein story. Uh, except for uh, the, the main character, one of the main characters in it uh, is a mom whose son was shot. Uh, African-American descent, and she decides to figure out a way to bring them back to life. So it's kind of using that idea, that Frankenstein idea, in that sort of uh, s uh, story parameters. And it's been interesting. The writing is very strong. Uh, the art's pretty good, too. Um, I have, didn't know anything about it. It's one of those ones where like, I see it in previews and I go, oh, I'm going to give that a try. So I'm glad that I did. Um, it's only five issues, six issues, something like that. So... If you feel like it, you can trade weight, or if you feel like reading a good book right now, Destroyer is a good one. The next two, uh, well, this one is good, Darth Vader. I think I said last time how much I loved the original, the last Darth Vader series. <laughs> I don't know if it was the original, original one, um, but the one that Marvel did previous to this um, lasted for a couple, like 25 issues or something like that, and it was really well written. I loved what they did with Darth Vader. Um, and then this one takes place right after um, Return of the Revenge of the Sith or Return of the Sith or whatever. So basically, Darth Vader has just found out that, you know, Padme died. 
and he goes off with um, the Emperor. And so this starts him off on what's supposedly like his first adventure after that event happens. Um, the art's good, the writing's strong so far. Um, I just think they do, a, they do a really good job of making Darth Vader a believable character. And you know what? He's probably one of the most famous villains of all time, you know, from movies and everything. Um, so it's been an interesting character study as well. What are, what are his motivations? Why is he the way that he is, you know? If it's interesting to watch Luke Skywalker learn about the Force uh, on the side of good, you might be interested uh, in seeing another person interested in the Force, but seeing the power in the dark side of it. Um, so, I mean, give that one a go. <laughs> and if you like Star Wars... And then the last one that you should read, of course, is uh, Scooby-Doo Team-Up. I can't say enough good things about Scooby-Doo Team-Up. I want everyone to put this on their pull list. <laughs> We're on issue 27. And as you can see, this issue has Plastic Man in it. And this is what has been so great about this title, is that the team-ups have always... They've just been the craziest things. You know, you never know who they're going to team up with. One issue they're teaming up with Plastic Man, the next issue it's Hong Kong Fooey, the next issue after that, you know, it's Aquaman. It's like they really uh, surprise me with what they're going to do. The It's an all-ages title, so some of the jokes are lame, but they do reference a lot of the t old TV show, so if you, you know, remember that, um, you'll really love the, diff the different little inside jokes that they do with this title. And it's, it's just a feel-good book, you know? Not everything has to be so heavy all the time, and... It's rare, in my opinion, to find an all-ages book that actually feels like all ages could read this, you know. Uh, and uh, this is the one. So those are my five that I'm suggesting that you put on your pool list and that you read. And then there's two new ones that I've read that I want to share with you. Uh, this one called Blood Brothers. Hermanos de Sangre um, from Dynamite. I didn't really know anything about it. I just liked the art. I thought it was cool. And I've read this first issue, and it's basically the story of these brothers who are, uh, one's a detective, one's a luchador, of course, as you do. And uh, they're going to uh, figure out a, you know, a murder, a scene, and all that kind of stuff like that. It's a limited series, I believe. It's only like five or six issues, so not a big commitment. But it's, oh, this brother here, I'm not sure if he's died, and so now he can see ghosts, or if he's just got this ability to see ghosts. But... They've done this really fun thing in this in this comic where um, he'll he'll appear to be talking to himself, and everybody else in the in the scene will be like, you know, what's going on? But then we see that he's actually talking to a ghost. Uh, so that's been fun with him. And then his brother's just sort of like this luchador. And what's been great about his character, as far as the art and the storyline goes, uh, in this issue is that he does some actual like luchador wrestling moves to uh, apprehend people. Which, you know, it's not just him punching or kicking somebody, like, the suplexes. <laughs> so, hopefully that'll continue throughout the, throughout the series, because it really gives them both uh, distinctive characters then. You know, like, his fighting style is the style of a wrestler. He's not going to suddenly bust out some jujitsu. you know. He's not MMA, he's luchador. Um, so maybe he'll jump off of something. That would be fun to see. And then, the, the, just the way that they've been playing this other character, the other brother, um, and his abilities as well, I thought was really, really interesting and, and unique. So give that one a try. I think it's being it's well written. Um, but the number one comic that everyone should have there in their pool list right now, like I'm sorry, I can't help that. Um, when I saw this advertised, I was like, I have to know what this is all about. And you will too, once you see Shirtless Bear Fighter. Shirtless Bear Fighter. What can I say about Shirtless Bear Fighter? Look at that cover. If that doesn't inspire you right there. I believe it's a limited series, but I could see this going on forever and ever, because who doesn't love a shirtless bear fighter? And the story is quite simple. There's a man who lives out in the forest who was raised by bears, who something happened in which he don't want to, uh, he wants to fight bears now. He don't want to live with bears anymore. Uh, and there's a lot of uh, kind of 80s nods to it, like uh, uh, sort of like, um, I don't know, I'm forgetting the movie, but where Arnold Schwarzenegger lived out in the wild and they went to go get, the government went to go get him to take care of this case. That's kind of what's happening with Shirley Spur Fighter. Um, the other thing is, I have to show you, of course, is here's a bear coming down. Oh no, the bear's gonna fight us. Um, is when Shirley Spur Finder comes into. <laughs> because he's naked. <laughs> but they blur out everything. So it's just kind of like, all right, finally somebody made a comic book for me. And I also love, too, that when he punches bears, it goes, bear punch. So. <laughs> 
So he's just kind of a wild man from, from you know, from the wild. And oh, he's got a bear plane and he's got a bear car and his house is made out of bear pelts. It's, so the jokes are kind of heavy, you know, but it's fun. Um, it's not all ages, obviously, but <laughs> but it's a good, it's a fun title. It might, it's making me think actually of, uh, you know, I've been saying how fun I think Karate is. This is just as fun. <laughs> so if you like to just see people, you know, fight and this kind of humor, um, I can't say enough good things about Shirtless Bear Fighter. So <laughs> add that to your list of fun.